Hey everybody. So some of you guys may know that I grew up in the US and I'm a big fan of the NBA. And like all hardcore NBA fans, or really just US sports fans in general, one of the debates that we love getting into it's to argue about which player is overrated or underrated. Meaning, which player is getting too much credit or too much love and another player it's not getting enough credit or enough love. Now moving the topic to smartphones, I think LG phones have been underrated for the past couple of years. And it's not just something that I came up with. Um, I think MKBHD also said the same thing. Like again, if you're an American dude, you're gonna think about stuff like what's overrated, what's underrated all the time. But even taking that into account that the LG phones tend to be underrated, I think the LG G8 it's gonna be even more underrated than usual. So the reason I say that it's because the LG G8 is a phone that at first glance it doesn't look like it's changed much in appearance. It looks very very similar to the LG G7 and on top of that this phone is coming at a time when other phone brands are trying crazy different ideas such as a hole punch display or a folding phone or phones with pop-up screen pop-up cameras or phones with a second screen on the back you know even me someone who's a big fan of LG devices thought the same thing because I got the GA roughly the same time as when I got the Huawei P30 Pro and I gotta admit when I first held these two phones side by side my first thought was wow the GA looks a bit bland and the Huawei P30 Pro just looks so much sleeker and sexier. I mean, you have a curved display that in my opinion just looks a little bit more sexy and appealing than a flat panel. You have a much smaller notch and you know, like gradient color back, all that. So the P30 Pro just stands out a bit more. Now, likewise, when you hold the LG G8 next to the Samsung Galaxy S10, same thing. Again, you have that curved screen that looks more appealing. The bezels around the screen look smaller and the hole punch display just in my opinion looks better than a giant notch. But then I started using the LG G8 more and more and I began to realize that it's not fair to say that the G8 doesn't change much from previous year because LG actually made a lot of subtle improvements to the phone that you may not notice at first glance but when you use the phone day to day you'll start noticing it and you'll start appreciating it. It's the difference are not that drastic, but they're understated and they are actually very useful. So the two areas that I just criticized the G8 for, that larger notch and the flat display, actually ended up making the phone more practical to use. So I'll explain. So the reason the notch is so big on the G8, it's not because of the selfie camera. LG also put an infrared sensor and a TOF camera into this notch. And the TOF camera, it's basically a 3D scanner. And what it does is it allows me to unlock the phone with my face. And it's a real 3D face unlock, similar to what you get from an iPhone XS or iPhone 10. Now on something like a Huawei P30 Pro or a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, you can do face unlock on it too, but it's a flat 2D face unlock that's nowhere near as secure. In fact, some dude at The Verge in his Galaxy S10 review, he was able to unlock the S10 by showing a video of his face playing off an iPhone. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to do that with the LG G8 because it has a real 3D face scanning system. So it's a bigger notch, but it serves a purpose. Now, likewise with the flat panel. So yeah, I'm in my opinion, again, the flat screen doesn't look as sexy as a curved screen, but the curved screen, I find that it's very prone to accidental touches. When you're gripping the phone with one hand, the fat part of your palm tends to touch the screen. Now. The problem is not that bad when you're using the phone upright, but when I find out when I'm lying on my back on a couch or on a bed and I'm holding the phone above me like this, oftentimes the fat part of my palm will touch the screen too much and I won't be able to register touches. On the LG G8, I have no such problems. It's actually not completely accurate to say the LG G8's display panel is flat because there are subtle curves at the edge of every part of the screen. That gives the phone a more premium feeling because when you run your finger through the edges of the screen, you don't feel that hard edge that you would get on um, like a Xiaomi or OnePlus device. For example, even the OnePlus 6T, which is a very premium phone, but when I run my finger through the edge of the screen, you'll notice a little hard edge right, right here. That's because the display panel, it's completely flat. So this type of screen technology where it's kind of blended into the chassis a little bit smoother, you only get this in true flagship phones like the iPhone 10, Huawei P30 Pro, LG G8, 
Samsung Galaxy S10 and I think like the Oppo Find X. Other than that, all other phones out there like the Vivo Nix, Xiaomi Mi Mix 3, Xiaomi Mi 9, OnePlus 6T, they all have that subtle hard edge between where the edge screen meets the chassis of the body. So speaking of a smooth body, the LG J actually has one of the smoothest bodies all around I've ever used. So you notice that the notch actually doesn't have an earpiece. So now instead, when you're making a phone call, sound will vibrate through the screen to your ear. So no earpiece means the entire front panel is smooth. It's just one piece of glass. Likewise on the back, LG has managed to put a piece of glass, I believe it's Gorilla Glass 5, over the camera module. So that means other than the fingerprint sensor, everything about the back of the phone is smooth. When you run your finger through the camera module, you can't even feel the camera module is completely smooth. Now, it's little things like this that make the G8 a very refined device. For example, on a Huawei P30 Pro and an iPhone 10, there's a major camera bump and the camera's off to the side. So when you're using the phone flat on a desk and you push it, it will wobble. On the LG G8, you have no such problem. The phone is entirely smooth. Everything about the G8 just makes sense. Like all the buttons are in its proper location. For example, the power button on the right side is easy to reach whether you're holding the phone with your left hand or the right hand. Unlike the Samsung Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus, whose power button it's really high up on the phone. Now on the standard S10, it's a little bit easier to manage, but when you're using S10 Plus, the power button is just so high up, it's impossible to reach unless you adjust your grip. So it's all the little things. LG G8, at first glance, looks a bit bland and looks like all the other phones that came out in 2018. But you hold it in your hand a little bit and you use it for a day and you realize that it's a very refined design. Everything has been well thought out and everything just makes sense and it's an elegant piece of hardware. Let's go over the rest of the specs really quick. You have a 6.1 inch OLED display with a resolution of 3120 by 1440. So it's a beautiful panel. It technically doesn't get as bright as the Samsung Galaxy S10's display, but it's more than bright enough to use outdoors. And to be honest, when you put the two screens side by side, you can't even see that big of a difference. The minor problems that plague the LG V30 screen is gone. You don't get any color shifting on the G8's OLED panel. It's just a flawless, beautiful panel. So inside the phone is a Snapdragon 855 with six gigs of RAM, and there's a 3500 milliamp hour battery inside. Now, the battery size is still smaller than what you get in something like a P30 Pro, but it's good enough for now. For the G8, I find that it's enough to power me all day, barely. Like, I'll start my day at 10 a.m., and by midnight, when my day is done, the phone will be hovering around like 8%, 5% battery life. So it's kind of teetering dangerously to the, to the end, but at least it will go all day. On the V40, it couldn't even make it past dinner time. Now you may have noticed that when I first tested the G8 about a month ago, I showed off the triple camera version. Well, the one I have here obviously has only two cameras. That's because this is a US model. So I believe the triple camera G8 is only releasing in Korea and probably Hong Kong. I think the dual camera model is gonna hit the US and probably Europe. I think LG's doing this to kind of control costs and pricing because LG knows that it cannot sell the G8 at the same price as the S10 or iPhone. So it cannot price this thing at a thousand US dollars. So instead it will sell the phone at probably like 750 or 800 bucks. And when you do that, then you have to kind of cut costs a little bit to avoid losing money. And to be honest, the missing camera, it's a telephoto lens, and I don't really care for that that much. You still get a standard camera here, 12 megapixel f1.5 aperture, with a 16 megapixel wide angle lens, that's very useful. So these two cameras alone, to, to be honest, is good enough. I don't really need the, the telephoto lens, unless it's something crazy like Huawei's five times zoom. So I don't think the camera hardware has changed at all from the LG V40. So, um, the software did get a little bit of improvement, so, but for the most part, camera performance between the G8 and the V40 are very, very similar. That means the camera performance here, it's very good, but not quite the best. Now, when you're taking photos in daytime, you're gonna have no issues. Everything's gonna come out sharp and crisp and vibrant. But when you're taking photos at night in a big city, so like a night shot with a lot of lights, I find that the LG G8 tend to overexpose the lights just like the LG V40 did. That's because the f1.5 aperture, it's wide open. Now on other phones like a Huawei P30 Pro or an iPhone, I find that the camera software is smart enough to fix the overexposure later. After I take the shot, it will just come out clean. 
But on the G8, it's not the case. If I take a photo, the, f the lights will usually be blown out. Now, it's an easy fix. All you have to do is tap on the viewfinder and dial the exposure down a little bit. But still, the fact that you have to do this yourself instead of the camera automatically do it for you just shows that LG's camera software has a little bit of catching up to do. But still, if you know what you're doing with the LG G8's camera, you're gonna get really great shots. That's because the camera app, it's very advanced. Like the manual mode, the pro shooting mode on the LG G8 is the best manual mode I've seen in any other phone. So not only do you get to control ISO, shutter speed, all of that, you even get a histogram and focus peaking. Both of these features are what you get from like a DSLR and it's great to see it on a mobile phone. I love it. So unfortunately, you only get manual controls when you're shooting still photography. When you're shooting video, you don't get that um, for some reason. You can do it on a V40, but not on a G8. I don't know why. I think LG removed it from the G8 just to differentiate between the two devices. Now fortunately, some of the fun shooting modes you get from the V40, such as the ability to shoot a cinemagraph, it's here on the G8 too. So shooting a cinemagraph is very easy. It just takes a couple of taps and 10 seconds and after that you're able to capture an image that moves well i mean it's technically a video or a gif but it looks like a still image that moves and it's something that if you post on instagram you're gonna get a lot of likes and a lot of like whoa that's very cool so i also think the lg g8's video capabilities are very strong it's probably the best in android i still think the iphone 10s's video capabilities is better but with the g8 you can shoot very smooth videos all the way up to 4k 30 and you can shoot 4k 62 but when you shoot in that mode you don't get stabilization but still something like a huawei p30 pro you still can't shoot 4k 60. now as for the selfie camera it's an 8 megapixel selfie camera and it is what it is i mean it's perfectly fine but i personally don't like taking selfies but it'll get the job done though What's more interesting is that TOF camera, because as I mentioned, it allows you to do face unlock, right? But you know, knowing LG, they always try crazy ideas. So you can also unlock the phone with your palm. I know it's pretty easy to use. All you have to do is put your hand about six inches away from the screen, and then it will scan my vein and unlock the phone, just like that. So you see, it takes a little bit of time. It takes like maybe five seconds. So you might argue, what's the point of that? Well. Let's say you're cooking or you're eating a greasy ass hamburger. You don't want to grab your phone and get grease all over it, right? Then it's useful when your phone's on a desk, you're eating a burger, just hover your hand over it and you can unlock the phone. And LG didn't stop there. LG also introduced air motion that allows you to control parts of the phone with your palm. So using it, it's, it's a little bit funky, but all you do is hover your hand over it and then pull back as if you're grabbing like like as Mr. Mobile said, like a pinch of salt and then you can open apps like doing that. You can open any app too. So right now I've set it so you can open Instagram or YouTube by doing this. And yeah, it's a little bit funky, but it works. And on top of that, you can also control music playback and video playback. So yeah, it's a little bit gimmicky, but there are scenarios when they do come in handy. So in terms of performance, don't really need to talk too much. There's a Snapdragon 855 chipset in there, so you know it can handle any game you can think of and just edit 4K videos really fast. No lag whatsoever. Now, LG software, um, you know, gets criticized a lot. Personally, I don't hate it. I mean, I'm not, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I think it's fine. It's clean enough for my liking. I like the little shortcut gestures, such as pressing a button to bring down a notification shade. And I like that you can double tap on the screen to lock or turn on. That's a really awesome feature that LG introduced. And I don't know why other phones haven't copied the idea yet. I mean, some of them have, but a lot of phones do not. Like my Huawei P30 Pro, I wish I could unlock the phone by just tapping on it. All right, so you know what we gotta do? We gotta do a video speaker test. So sound comes out from the bottom fine speaker grill right here and also vibrates through the top of the screen. So you do get essentially a stereo speaker. So we'll go up to max volume. So you see, sounds coming out from this side. You're getting stereo sound. We're going on the 50% volume. So this speaker is good. Um, on the Meiju Zero, which also had a vibrating speaker, I found out there was a lot of distortion. On the LG G8, you don't get any distortion. It's a good vibrating speaker. So that's about it for the LG G8. When you use the LG G8, like regularly you'll really come to admire how we find it is like everything about it like it takes every box there's no performance 
that suffers and there's nothing that's missing you have a headphone jack you have a very good set of stereo speakers with sound coming out of the bottom and the earpiece you have a display that's very nice battery life that's you know good enough now not the greatest but good enough plenty of power to handle every task water resistance wireless charging so there's really nothing that's missing really it comes down to personal preference do you want the sexiest looking phone like i think the galaxy s10 is indeed a better looking phone so if you care about looks that much then you go for the s10 but if you don't mind looks that much and you just want something that fits in the hand very comfortably then i think the lg g8 is great and on top of that i believe that g8 should be a little bit cheaper than the s10 and the p30 pro too so that's another area where that could entice you so that's it for now um, i'm gonna have more videos coming up in the next few days on the p30 lg g8 and other phones and i'm gonna check out the oppo reno very soon too so that's it for now thanks for watching